The Mr. FPGA project has quickly become one of the biggest things to ever happen in retro gaming. While there's other devices that offer multiple platform support, there's never been one as accurate with as low latency as Mr. Sometimes the biggest obstacle in getting started with a project like this is getting over that initial hurdle, and that's exactly what this video is aiming to help with. Getting started with Mr. as quickly as possible on the smallest budget possible. The Mr. FPGA project is constantly evolving, and you'll often see amazing new features and cores being added. However, the getting started process has been the same for a while now, and I don't see that changing majorly anytime in the future. So what you learn in this video should stand the test of time. Also, this video is gonna focus on getting HDMI out from your Mr. However, there's some pretty amazing analog video options as well. Regardless of what your end display is, you still have to do everything you see here, so you won't waste any time by doing this if your end goal is to go into an arcade machine or to an RGB monitor. You still gotta do everything the same as I'm about to show it. So, let's jump in. The main hub of the Mr. Project is the DE10 Nano FPGA Development Kit. As with everything these days, they're often out of stock, but if you're patient, you could easily find one for around $200. There's no alternatives to this though, so you need to get this exact one. The DE10 comes with a plexi case and some metal standoffs as feet, so it should be fine to get you started. It also includes some cables that are mostly useless, I don't think I've ever found a use for one of these, and it comes with a power supply that'll definitely be good enough in most scenarios, especially with what we're showing here. The DE10 comes with an 8GB microSD card, and while you'll most likely end up switching to a different storage method for your final ROM solution, I strongly recommend just getting started with this one and not spending money on anything else until you've worked out exactly how you want to finalize your setup. You'll need a way to connect that microSD card to your PC though, but any cheap USB reader would work. Next, I strongly recommend a cheap micro USB hub. You'll probably end up deciding a different accessory will fit your total setup best, but for under $10, this is a worthy tool to have in your toolkit and will help troubleshoot any future issues you might have. You might be able to use an existing USB hub you already own, but you'll need a USB-A to micro USB converter, which is about the same price as the hub, so maybe just get the hub. You'll need a USB keyboard for your initial configuration, and if your main focus on the Mr. is going to be PC cores, you might want to invest in a nice one, but if you just need it for setup, any old crappy one like this will totally work. I personally like these little wireless ones and think it's a worthy $20 to spend. Even though I don't use it often, it's really handy to have a dedicated keyboard that's small enough to tuck away. I'd also strongly recommend getting a RAM module. If you're on a really tight budget, you could still access a few systems without it, but for the long term, I'd consider it mandatory. Just connect it as you see here, with the writing facing out on this side of the DE10. Some other common options are beautiful cases designed by members of the retro gaming community, a Wi-Fi dongle for people without wired ethernet, a Bluetooth adapter for more modern controllers, and some USB controllers. I suggest using whatever you have available at first, or just buying the cheapest thing possible until you decide what's best for your setup. It's really easy to get caught up in talking about all the different awesome accessories available for the Mr., but really, all you need to get started is the DE10 Nano, a USB keyboard, and an internet connection in order to download the software, which is what I'm going to show next. The first thing you want to do is connect the micro SD card to your computer. And every time you connect the Mr.'s micro SD card, you'll see a lot of messages pop up. Always hit cancel or close to all of them, or you'll have to start the process over. Now go to the Mr. Fusion GitHub and download the latest release. Then extract the ISO from the zip file. I've been scolded in the past for not teaching people how to unzip a file in these tutorials, so I'll show you here. Using any operating system released in the past 20 years, find where you downloaded the file, then click on it, then drag the file to your desktop or a folder. Next, use any imaging software to write the ISO file to the micro SD card. As usual, I'm using Win32 Disk Imager, but that's because I'm a grumpy old man who doesn't like change. Honestly, you could use Rufus, Lily Live, and countless others available for every operating system. When it's done, eject the microSD card, 
plug it into your DE10 and connect it to a display. Mr. Fusion will do all the work for you, so just sit back and let it do its thing. After a few minutes, you'll be at a fuzzy screen that says no files. Great, you're almost done. Unplug the Mr. and put the SD card back into your PC for the final configuration. First, I recommend downloading the very handy update script called Update All. Then unzip it and put it in the scripts directory on your micro SD card. You don't have to do this, but it's a big help, and while someday the recommended script might change, this process will be the exact same. There's one last thing you have to do on your PC. Go to the root of the micro SD, copy the example file, and rename it mister.ini. Then open it in Notepad or any text editor and scroll down. Now just change the video mode to whichever matches your display's resolution. I'm sure the Mr. team will make this an easier GUI-based option soon, but I wanted to at least show you the Mr. INI file, as there's a bunch of other cool stuff you might want to eventually go back, check out, and tweak. Okay, eject the micro SD card once again and go back to your Mr. Make sure you have a keyboard connected for this part, as well as either a Wi-Fi module or Ethernet cable. First, if you plan on using Wi-Fi, make sure the USB adapter you purchased is connected, then hit the escape key on the keyboard, go into the scripts directory, and select Wi-Fi. Now, follow the on-screen prompts to connect to your network. If you're connecting via an Ethernet cable, simply wait until you see the network logo appear on the top of the screen, and then you could continue. Either way, once you're connected to the internet, go to the scripts directory and run update all. The first time you run it, it'll take a long time. I definitely suggest going to do something else and coming back, or even just leave it overnight if you have a really slow internet connection. After it's done, it should automatically reboot back to the main menu, and your mister will look something like this. Now, even if you already know you're going to be using a different ROM solution in the future, I still recommend throwing at least a few ROMs on this micro SD card, just so you could get some testing done and make sure everything's working. Just make sure to put the correct ROM under the corresponding console folder in the games directory. So you don't want to put a Genesis ROM in the Super Nintendo folder or vice versa. Just keep it into the directory structure that Mr. Fusion already created for you. Now for the final step in setup. Plug in a USB controller, hit escape on the keyboard, and configure your controller. You could skip any buttons that your controller doesn't support using the keyboard. For this part, I always like to configure hitting start and select at the same time in order to bring up the menu, but whatever button combination you choose is totally up to you. After you're done, you could unplug the keyboard and start playing your games. There's one other thing I want to show though. While all of your console cores should have the controller pre-configured, you'll probably need to tweak each arcade core. Watch how easy this is. Just load the game, bring up the menu with a pre-configured button combo, then configure the controller for that game. Then just save your settings, exit the menu, and start playing your game. So that sums it up. It really is that easy to get started with the Mr. FPGA project. Now, there's a ton of options that you could spend forever going through and tweaking, and that's something that I definitely encourage you to do if you're into that, but if you just want a really low latency, fun way to play your games, you're pretty much all set. I do recommend checking some of the options to make sure your display is running at the lowest latency and your controllers are as well. I have a bunch of this info up on RetroRGB.com and the Mr.'s official documentation is pretty good as well, so that's always a great place to reference. Also, My Life in Gaming just did an awesome deep dive video that takes two and a half hours to go into everything you would need to know about the Mr. Project today. And of course, I will also be following up this video with one dedicated just to the analog video output options, because you could get RGB, component video, S-video, composite video, VGA, and JAMA for use in arcade cabinets all through the Mr. FPGA Project. That definitely deserves a video all in itself, and I didn't want to confuse anything here. And like I said at the beginning, if you want to use any of those options, you still have to do all of this anyway, so I certainly didn't waste anybody's time. One last thing I want to mention is that most of the main developers of the Mr. Project have Patreons, and it's your support that allows some of this amazing core development to happen. So if you're a fan of the project and you love it as much as I do, please consider supporting the developers on Patreon and check out which one of them making it available. Well, that about sums it up for this time. Thanks very much for watching. 
please consider subscribing to the channel and checking out all of the different retro gaming related content I have, as well as the weekly podcast that keeps everybody in the loop of everything going on in the retro gaming scene. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.